Hi there, welcome back to the channel Living Track Go Cycling. Today I'm fetching you an informative video into the essential art of packing your bike into a bike box. In our case, Bike Box Allen. Today we're going to pack this into this and we're going to pack this into this. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to catch all the handy hints and tips I'm going to give as we go along. But before we dive into the packing, make sure you hit that like button. Feel free to comment in the comment section below with any tips that you've got on bike packing yourselves. And if you haven't done already, consider hitting that subscribe button uh, to make sure you don't miss any of our future cycling adventures because we've got some coming up. A great tip for packing your bike into a bike box or a bag is to give yourself plenty of room to maneuver. Get yourself plenty of space. Ideally, I would have done it in the garden, but this morning the weather is against me. It's raining, the grass is wet, uh, can't do it out there. So I've elected to come into the dining room uh, to do it here. I've made as much space as I possibly can, um, put some protective flooring down onto the uh, floor so I don't get in trouble. Yes, and that's a... I should think so too. <laughs> and that's a great tip. Give yourself plenty of uh, room to maneuver. The other thing that you're going to need uh, as has just been pointed out to me, is... Plenty of time, so you don't stress out. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, in disassembling the bike, ready for packing, is to remove the wheels. First of all, I'm going to deflate the tyre by about 70 or 80%, and there's a reason for that which I'll explain shortly. Okay, wheel out. Once the wheel is out, uh, if your bike's got a through axle, put that through axle back in. I'll explain why we do this when we pack the bike into the box itself. Okay, so back wheel out. And through axle back into the frame. When you put the through axle uh, uh, on the back wheel back into the frame, uh, a good tip is to put the chain over the through axle uh, in this fashion so it keeps the chain away from the frame. So here we have the frame with both front and rear wheel removed and you'll notice uh, no bike bottle cages. If your bike has uh, bottle cages on it, prior to packing, remove them. I'll explain why when we put the frame in the box. You'll see under the saddle here um, a tracker. It's not a GPS tracker, it's a Bluetooth tracker. Uh, we bought these the last time we flew the bikes out to Mallorca. It just gives peace of mind that as the bike flies and travels, and particularly as it goes through the airport, we're aware of its location all the time. Um, it links to uh, an app on the uh, our Android phones. It's a similar thing to the uh, Apple Air Tags. Tags, that's yeah. it, yeah. These are Samsung, yeah. Um, and they work in exactly the same way. Whenever it travels, it, it'll pick up on people's uh, Android phones or Samsung phones, I think it is in particular, isn't it? Well, I, think, I don't know. I think it's just Android, any Android phone. There's and it gives its location. Peace of, peace of mind. You'll note inside of the... Uh, box in the top left hand corner here are packing instructions to assist the packer uh, on uh, how to pack a small or medium frame bike and how to pack uh, a slightly bigger bike. Uh, also note that this bike gives you handy hint hints, let me try and get closer here, I don't know whether you can see it, tells you where to put the front wheel with a disc rotor facing towards the foam and on the other side obviously is the uh, rear wheel disc rotor faces towards the foam. I mentioned earlier when taking the wheels off the bike that I was keen to deflate the tyre by about 70 or 80%, uh, take the air out. And the reason for that is this, even though I've done it to this wheel, when you put the wheel into the uh, case itself, uh, into the space uh, afforded for the wheel, um, if you'll notice here, it still won't fit. And that's because there's still a little bit too much air within the tyre 
for the wheel to go. And even though I press it down quite hard, it still won't go in. So here I've got to deflate the tire further in order to fit the wheel securely within the allotted space. Okay, so here I put the bike box onto its back. So the wheel is flat on the floor uh, and I'm having to squash the tire, depress it quite uh, far in order to get the wheel to fit <laughs> securely into the frame. So it's a nice snug tight fit. Here you can see that the front wheel is uh, in, disc rotor facing the form as per the instructions of the box and both wheels for this box are secured in place with quick release skewers. Now of course this bike, as a lot of modern bikes uh, don't, they don't come with quick release skewers, they come with through axles. Bikes with disc brakes invariably or more often than not due to strength and safety reasons comes with through axles. So when you're packing a modern bike with disc brakes into a bike box island premium of this uh, type, you'll need to get yourself a couple of spare quick release skewers to secure the wheels to the frame. So the quick release skewer goes straight through the middle into a hole in the uh, bottom of the uh, box and secures on the other side with the nut, which I'll show you in a second. Here you can see the end of the quick release skewer sticking out the hole on the other side of the um, front wheel. And it's simply a case of securing it with the nut there so the wheel remains nice and secure onto this side of the case. Job done. Just securing the second wheel. And uh, one good point that I've just realized is um, you have to make sure that your quick release skewer is long enough, particularly for, well, for both wheels really, to make sure that it uh, goes right through the axle of the wheel and out the other side of the box. Because the first quick release skewer that I used, which was from the front of a bike, the front fork was too short. So make sure you're using two longer quick release skewers to secure the wheels. The next thing we need to think about before putting the bike into the box uh, is putting a disc brake uh, spacer uh, into the caliper. And this is what I'm showing you here. You can see that um, it's a particular shape, it's made of plastic. And this particular one was a set of two, I'd lost one, which came with a bike when I originally bought it. This is designed to stop the disc brake pads moving whilst the bike is in transit. If they move, potentially it can cause you a headache. And it simply works by inserting this way in between the pads and the pointy bits that you saw simply clip on to the pin that goes through the caliper and it stays in place. So you need to get yourself a couple of those if you can. If you haven't, there is a workaround which I'll show you next. Uh, a hack, if you haven't got one of those proper disc brake spaces, is just to use a bit of cardboard. I've seen lots of reviews which recommend this, so this is fine. On the left, you can see here a single piece of cardboard that I've just cut out from a box and I folded it over several times, which you can see there. Um, and all you have to do is just slide that in between your uh, disc brake pads for transit and it should do a similar job. Not as good as the proper thing, but better than nothing. I was just going to say, as per GCN, is it a hack or is it a bulge? <laughs> we'll go with hack. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing we're going to do before we put the bike into the box is take the pedals off. Don't do what I just did. Try and put the bike in the box with the pedals on. It doesn't work. So uh, in this case, six mil Allen key. Um, and from the inside, uh, the non-drive side pedal is normal thread. So we'll take this one off first. And once it's off, just plonk it to one side. Okay. In taking the drive side pedal off, this is a reverse thread. So Alan key in from the inside of the crank arm and you're turning it the opposite way uh, to what you did the other one. So this is turning clockwise to undo. Bike is now in box in this orientation and the next thing that I'm going to do is just to loosen the handlebars or to remove the handlebars from the stem so 
the bike can be secured in and the lid can actually close. In undoing or loosening your, your handlebar stem bolts, uh, make sure that you um, loosen them evenly uh, to reduce the load in an even fashion across all four bolts rather than completely loosening and taking out one and then doing the next. So undo them bit by bit. First perhaps this one, then this one down here, then this one, then this one gradually reducing the tension on each bolt until they are completely out. With the handlebar out and your face plate back on, just put each of the four bolts back in and gently uh, screw them back in just so they're um, almost finger tight, nothing more. Uh, don't over tighten them, no need, just so they won't move during transit. They're secure for transit. Next tip that I'm going to offer you is to get yourself one of these. Uh, it's a torque wrench. This is just a cheap set, but it does the job. Um, uh, the purpose of this is to, if you don't know, is to tighten the components uh, up to the correct torque setting when you rebuild your bike once you get to your destination. Um, if you love your bike, if you care for it, and you, you want to do the job properly, one of these torque wrench sets is an absolute must. You remember earlier on when I removed the wheels, I mentioned that it was a good idea to put the um, through axles back into the frame, as you can see here, I'm pointing out to it. Uh, and the reason for that is basically once the bike is uh, in the box, uh, it, it strengthens the frame. It gives the frame more stability and strength during transit. Uh, if they're not in, the frame is more flexible and if external pressures are applied to the box, it can cause damage if the frame is pushed um, too far. Um, but when the through axles are in, uh, it adds extra strength or stability, rigidity to the frame. The next thing we're going to talk about is this pipe lagging, foam pipe lagging. It's great protection for the frame of your bike as it travels in your box. You can buy it from most hardware stores. In fact, I think I got this from B&Q. These three particular pieces are different diameters designed to go on different tubes uh, on your frame, whether it's your top tube, your forks or your down tube. And uh, this is what we're going to fit next. Okay, so we're going to fit this piece first to uh, one of the back uh, forks that drop down towards the rear mech. And we're going to put this on um, before, so it's on there now, before we attach the Velcro. And once it's on, Velcro straps attached so it's nice and secure. And we basically repeat that process in as many places as you want, attaching the, the, the cladding, the foam pipe cladding to whatever tubes you want. But the more you can do it to, the safer your bike frame is. Okay, so nice thick piece of uh, bubble wrap. It's coming in a package from, uh, from an Amazon delivery. Uh, and I just try and tend to try and wrap this around the rear max to give the uh, rear mech as much protection as I possibly can because it's a delicate component. So I just try and wrap it round, something like that, leave it in situ, that's the best that I can do for it. Always a good idea to do a lid close test before you start packing extra bits and bobs inside the box which we're going to do next. Um, make sure that you, once the bike is in, the wheels are in, the frame is secured down, you can actually close the lid. Um, uh, otherwise you'll have um, readjustments to do. Okay, so what I like to do is put in as much cycling stuff into the box as I can fit. The reason being that with Jet 2 we have a 32 kilogram weight limit. And the bike is light, the bike box is light, so it makes sense to try and make use of that space, that weight, by cramming in as much as I can, then I can fit more in my suitcase and I can bring lots more souvenirs home. Plus, it gives you the extra benefit of um, further protection, because they're only soft items that we're packing in the case. It's further protection to the frame against knocks by over-exuberant baggage handlers. The next great tip, well, it might not be a great tip, but it's a tip nevertheless that I'm going to mention is pedals. Whether they're flat pedals like these or clipless pedals, 
don't pack them in your bike box for two reasons. One, they're a hard item. You don't want them moving down, even if you secure them as well as you can. You don't want them moving around and damage your frame and transit. And the other reason is, um, uh, particularly if you've got uh, clipless pedals with you, you know your own personal cleats on, whether they have a particular brand, if your bike does go missing during transit and you arrive at your destination without your pride and joy, at least you've got your pedals with you and you can use those pedals on a bike that you hire at your destination. So don't pack your pedals in with your bike box. Pack your pedals in your normal hold luggage. Not your hand luggage, your hold luggage. Better idea than travelling in your bike box. You can even pack footwear uh, in the bike box as long as it's a soft item, you know, not a particularly hard shoe. So trainers, uh, flip-flops. Yeah. Leave the stilettos at home. <laughs> yeah. If, you've, uh, if you're trying to cycle in a stiletto, you've got a problem. Another good tip um, is um, putting items inside your uh, bidons or bike bottles. As you can see here, um, I take quite a few gels away with us. I'm not sponsored by this company, um, but this is a brand that I use. And uh, rather than pack empty bike bottles into the box, make use of the space inside them. And there you can see that I've got several gels. It doesn't really matter what you put inside the, uh, the bottle. Something clean, obviously, because you're drinking out of it at the end of the day. But make use of the space uh, inside the bottle. Uh, and that can go in the bike box as well. Bike packed in box. Pipe lagging on, bike secured. Several items of soft clothing in there. A couple of items of soft footwear in there. So we're happy with the packing. We're almost ready to close the lid. One last job. Foam on over the crush bar. Close the lid. Which I will do in a second. Job's a good one. Lid secured, closed properly. Bike nice and safe, nice and snug inside the box. Just a case now of closing the clasps. And She's almost all ready, two last steps, and then we're done. The last thing to do is put some padlocks through these latches. And at, I think it's five, I what I like to do to save myself going completely nuts trying to find a key is I number the padlock and I number the key. And for the keys, we have a set each. So if I lose my key, set of keys, he's got some and vice versa. So let's put these on. The very last thing I do is put a name tag on there and on the name tag all I put is my name and my contact number so that if my case is lost and whoever finds it can contact me. I don't put my address on there and the reason I don't put my address on there is that if it gets noticed through security someone has to see my address on there uh, I don't want whilst I'm away from home a visit from Billy. Billy? Who's Billy? Billy Burglar. Um process for breaking down bike number two to pack is exactly the same. First thing I'm going to do is take the air out of the tyres um, and remove the bottle cages. I mentioned in the first video, i tell you why we remove the bottle cages. It simply makes it easy to pack in the bike box when you come to put the foam cladding around. Packing my Trek bike into this box is a slightly different setup and that's because the bike uh, has an integrated one-piece uh, handlebar. Um, this box is designed to fit such a bike. It's slightly bigger and a couple of compartments which are, I'm just trying to point it out, there uh, and on the other side. Um, furthermore, you'll see that um, you have one wheel stored on each side of the box. You can see the front wheel in the bottom part there and I've yet to put the back wheel uh, in the back. Uh, and then they're separated by a piece of foam. And the other difference that I'll note here is wheels in this box are not secured by quick release skewers, they're uh, secured by straps, Velcro straps, which I'll fasten shortly. Both wheels in, foam inserts to go in next. Frame of bike now uh, inserted uh, gently, just laid it down uh, into the box in position. Uh, I haven't secured it with the Velcro straps yet. And you can see that the 
uh, design of this box uh, is such that it caters for bikes with an integrated handlebar. No need to remove the handlebars uh, on this bike. It has this deeper section on both sides. Um, firstly, down here, you can see that the uh, handlebars intact, just rest in that recess. And when the lid is closed uh, at the top here, that will just fit over uh, this side of the bar as well. Um, just drawing your attention back to the crush pole here. That's why I mentioned uh, about removing your bottle cages because if you've got your bottle cages here it's going to get in the way of the crush pole uh, when the box is closed better to remove the uh, bottle cages completely it helps for better packing okay as you can see the frame is now in uh, I've packed it with uh, pipe cladding whatever I can get it to make it as protected as possible and I've also put some bubble wrap around the rear mech at the bottom there. Starting to pack some clothes in, uh, in bags obviously to keep the muck from the bike, even though the bike is clean, uh, off the items. Don't just throw clothes in willy nilly, put them in bags, keeps them cleaner. And you can see on this side here, even a couple of bottles down there in the recess, which I've cushioned by uh, other bags of clothing. Stop those from rattling about in transit. As we said, uh, with the packing of the other bike, you get 32 kilograms um, with the airline that we're traveling with, which is Jet 2, when we fly. So it pays to make as much use of that weight allowance uh, as possible. You're paying for it, get your money's worth. And we're all done. Uh, bike is packed, uh, air in the box fully secured, uh, clothes and bits and bobs are in there, there's a couple of bottles in there and one pair of soft flip flops. All we need to do now is close the lid, uh, lock it up and uh, we're ready to go. A couple of final tips for you which I hope you'll find uh, interesting. If your bike has uh, DI2 uh, or SRAM's equivalent electronic gears, Make sure your gears are fully charged before you go. You don't want to get to your destination with a quarter of a battery or a depleted battery and find that you can't use your gears when you're out there. Nightmare scenario. It's also worth taking your gear charger uh, with you um, just in case the bike during transit, uh, the gear levers uh, are activated by movement and uh, that can uh, deplete a fully charged system uh, if the derailleur moves constantly throughout transit. So if you've got electronic gears, two things, charge your gears before you go fully and secondly take your charger cables with you. And the last tip is take some tools with you so you can rebuild your bike when you get to your destination. Your allen keys, take a torque wrench which I've mentioned previously and any other tools that you think you'll need when you get there. Thanks very much for watching. Please, if you've enjoyed this video, you've found it informative, um, give it a like. It helps out the channel quite a lot. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button to catch more videos of our cycling adventures. Uh, and um, give us a like. Thanks very much.